So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly go about diagnosing thermostats. Now there's two things that we need to know in order to learn how to do that. One is obviously we need to know how to use our multimeter. Uh, we need to know where to put our probes, how to use jumpers and things of that nature. The second thing we have to know is actually how the internal switching works in a thermostat. Without that knowledge, we're not able to make sense of the readings that we get with our multimeter. The first thing we want to take a look at is when we take the faceplate off, we want to take a look at the part we're actually removing. Now in this case, it's just a plastic cover. I don't have any electronics on here. All my electronics are left behind on this thermostat. So what that tells me is that the switching mechanism on my thermostat is still connected to the terminals that my wires are connected to. So I could basically run this thermostat as normal. I can run heating mode, cooling mode, I can take tests and I could do everything without affecting the function of the thermostat by removing the plate. On other thermostats like this Nest Learning thermostat or this Honeywell Home thermostat, when I remove these covers, I am actually removing the switching mechanism. So all that's left behind are the actual terminal blocks that my wires connect to. So obviously I can't run the thermostat in two different modes with the switching mechanisms removed. I would have to actually manually use a jumper to make those things happen. So this is important to determine when you're going to diagnose a thermostat is what you're actually capable of testing when you remove the covers to access the terminals. The second thing we have to determine is where our power source is actually coming from. Now I'm not talking about whether the thermostat is battery operated or it charges off the system. What I'm talking about is how many transformers do we have connected to this thermostat. Every thermostat works by receiving 24 volts from a system and depending on what mode the thermostat is in, it will take that 24 volts and send it out on separate terminals to turn things on in our system. Now, when you remove the cover on a lot of these thermostats and you look at the terminals, you might actually see two R terminals. And what that means is that we have a thermostat that is capable of running two different systems with two different transformers. So in electrical, you don't want to cross the circuits from one transformer with the circuits of another transformer. Now, what that means to us when it comes to diagnostics is that our thermostat is made to not make certain connections between certain terminals here. So for example, we might have an RC terminal and as for cooling, C is for cooling. When we have an RH terminal and H is for heating. So our thermostat in cooling mode is only going to look for power from that cooling R terminal. It is not going to look for power on that H terminal, RH. So in cooling mode, we will have connections between R, Y1, Y2. On heat pump thermostats, we'll have a connection on the O terminal as well. Um, those are all cooling terminals. In heating mode, the thermostat is going to look for 24 volts from its heating terminal, the RH terminal. So you will have connections between RH, W1, um, B on some heat pump thermostats, also auxiliary heat, emergency heat, and so forth, depending on different modes that the heating system is in. So I'm going to take my multimeter here. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to put it into the continuity reading. Now on a continuity test, when I touch my leads together, I should hear a beep and that is telling me I have continuity or a complete circuit between two different points I'm testing with my probes. So going back to what I was explaining about these terminals, if, I, if my system's in cooling mode right now, okay, if I test from RC to the Y terminal, you can see I have continuity there. So I know my switch between RC and Y is working. Now, if I were to test from RH to Y, obviously I have no continuity there because my thermostat is not going to look for power from that RH terminal. Likewise, if I put my thermostat into a heating mode and I go from RH to W, I have continuity there. If I go from RC to W, I have nothing because my thermostat is not going to look for 24 volts on a cooling terminal to feed power to a system on my heating transformer. Now you can see here I have a jumper between my RC and my RH terminal. So this is going to change my test results a little bit. What this jumper is basically doing, it's turning both of these separated terminals into a just one single R terminal. So regardless of what mode my thermostat is in, 
it's still going to get power even if I only have one power wire coming up to RC or one power wire coming to RH. It's not going to make a difference. So right now my thermostat is in cooling mode. If I were to test between RC and Y, I have continuity. If I were to test between RH and Y, I still have continuity because now I'm just testing off the same R terminal with that jumper in there. So all we're doing with this jumper is turning two R terminals into one. And we only do that whenever we only have one transformer powering both heating and cooling systems. All right, so now we're ready to jump into actual diagnostics. And you can see here, I have all three of my thermostats. They're wired up, they're powered. Um, I have a contactor here that would represent the contactor out in the condensing unit. That's our outdoor unit. We have a relay here. This would represent a blower relay. And I have three different wiring arrangements here. On my Honeywell thermostat, I have a straight cooling setup. On my White Rogers thermostat here, I have both cooling and heating off of a single transformer unit like we discussed earlier in the video. So this would be a furnace with an evaporator coil sitting on top of it. And I have my jumper between the two R terminals. On my Nest thermostat, I have a heat pump setup. Now, once you know the batteries are good, um, one of the first things technician is going to do is check and make sure he actually has power at the R terminals. Um, a working thermostat is not going to be able to do anything if it doesn't have that 24 volts there. So I'm going to put my multimeter into the voltage AC position and we can check between R and common to see if we actually get a reading. And as you can see, I have 27 volts. Now, a very common mistake a lot of people make when they're first learning is that they will go from R to C on a thermostat and they'll read zero volts thinking they have a power problem. But the real problem is, is I don't actually have a wire hooked up to the C terminal. So without a wire hooked up to that C terminal, that C terminal is not connected to anything. This would be similar to putting one probe on your R terminal and have the other one flowing out in midair, wondering why you're not getting a reading. So for example, if I were to put one probe on the R terminal here on my White Rogers thermostat and the other probe on common, you can see on my meter I have zero volts, but I do have power on that R terminal. Whereas if I go from R to C on the thermostat with a common wire, I'm reading 27 volts. So one of the things you can do if you have a thermostat that doesn't have a wire hooked up to your common terminal is that you can actually use one of the other wires as a substitute. Uh, there's an old saying that all roads lead to Rome. Um, well, on thermostat wiring, other than the R wires, all of the other wires eventually go back to common on the power source, which is the transformer in the unit. So you can actually use the G wire, for example, um, assuming that your thermostat is in the off position, um, like this White Rogers here, if it's fully functional, you want to make sure it's off. You can go from R to G, and you can see now I'm reading 27 volts on my multimeter. So don't be fooled by the lack of a common wire and going from R to C reading zero volts thinking you don't have voltage there. Now another mistake a lot of people make when they first start learning is that they might test for voltage between R and Y for example. Let's say their cooling system isn't running and you can see on the meter I'm reading 27 volts and they're wondering why the system's not running. You're only going to read voltage between R and other terminals on a thermostat like this where the switching mechanism is removed because you're essentially doing the same thing. You're, you're testing for uh, between a power and a common essentially when that switch is not closed. So that's why you're reading 24 volts. Now let's go back to our functional thermostat here. If I were to actually put it in cooling mode and you're going to see my contactor pull in. All right, now my air conditioning system should be running. When I test for power between R and Y, I'm reading zero volts. And the reason why I'm reading zero volts is because my yellow wire is now just an extension of my red wire. They're the same wire. And so this would be the same thing as me trying to put both of my probes on the same terminal and wonder why I'm not getting a reading. It's all one wire now and you can't use two probes to get a reading off of one wire. So if I shut this back off again, go back to R to Y, now I'm reading 27 volts again. So don't get fooled by that either. A working thermostat that's functional in whatever mode you have it in, like say cooling mode, you should be reading zero volts between R and Y if the switching mechanism is working. Same thing with heating. You should be reading zero volts between R and W if that switch is actually working. 
Now, if you're ever testing one of these thermostats that remain functional when you take the plate off of it and you put it into cooling mode and you're still reading 25 or 27 volts or whatever it may be between R and Y, um, that can mean that your thermostat switch is not actually functioning properly. So that's a good indicator that you may have a bad thermostat there. Same thing for heating. If you have your thermostat put into the heating mode and you test between R, H, and W and you're reading 27 volts there, um, that also means your switch is in closing. You should be reading zero volts on a closed switch. If that's your case, there is something else you can do to confirm that diagnostic that you have a bad thermostat, and that is to actually jump or out the thermostat to bypass the switch. So you can do that with alligator clips like this. You can also do it with a regular thermostat wire with both ends stripped off to expose the copper. So just to show you, I would put one terminal on the Y terminal, and I would take the other, put it on RC, and you can see my contactor pulled in. So in a situation where my thermostat were switched into cooling mode, my system is not turning on and I'm reading 27 volts between RC and Y, um, that's a good indicator my switch is not functioning properly and when I jump right out to bypass that switch and it does work, that's the second confirmation you have a bad thermostat and it's time to replace it. Same thing with heating mode. If uh, I put my thermostat into a heating position, I have 27 volts between RH and W. I jump her out between W and RH and my heating system turns on. Once again, you have a bad thermostat. The switch is not working. Now, one last thing I'm gonna mention about these types of thermostats is that you don't have a jumper in there and you have two separate systems running off of this same thermostat, you do wanna be careful about where you put your jumper wires. For example, um, you always, if you're gonna test cooling, you always wanna go from RC to Y. If you're testing heating, you wanna go from RH to W. You do not wanna go RC to W or RH to Y. Um, you would be crossing circuits over by doing that. So always be mindful of that, make sure you don't do that. Now on the types of thermostats that when you remove the plate, you're removing the switching mechanism, you obviously can't do the same thing. You can't put it into cooling mode and heating mode and test it out the same way we just discussed. So in these cases, you do just actually have to jumper it out and see if the system starts. One thing I forgot to mention is one thing you don't want to do when you're doing jumpering is you don't want to go really nice and gentle on it and do this. You don't want to be doing that because your contactor is pulling in, it's chattering, your compressor is getting power and losing power and it can cause some damage to the system. So I usually recommend if you're new to this, just go ahead and shut the power off on the unit, place your jumper in securely, and then go back to the unit and turn the power back on again. Another advantage to doing it that way is that when you turn the power back on, you're physically going to be at the unit itself and you can actually see what happens. Then if you see any problems, you can immediately shut it off. You're right there by the power switch. Now, when it comes to these thermostats where when you remove the face plate to access the terminals and you're also removing switching mechanisms, the only way to really test these is to go ahead and bypass them. So on our Honeywell setup here with straight cooling, we would do the same thing. We would just go from R to Y and our system should be on and that's pretty much it. And if your system's working this way, what you wanna do now is put your faceplate back on to the thermostat and then you wanna go ahead and test it in cooling air heating mode. If your system works when you jump right out with a jumper, but it doesn't work when you put the plate back on and put it into whatever mode you're trying to test, then you have a bad thermostat. That means your switching mechanisms are not working. Now with a heat pump thermostat, jumpering this out is a different animal. Um, I will link to a video below that kind of teaches you how to jumper that, but basically a easy way to do it is you would shut your power off. You would take your Y1, your G, and your orange wire to the O terminal, you would put them together and run a jumper from all three of those to your R wire. And what that does is it's activating three separate parts of your system. It's activating the compressor in the condensing unit outside. It is activating the blower motor in the air handler. And that orange wire is activating the reversing valve, putting it in a cooling position. If you were to test for heat on this same type of wiring setup, you would do the Y1, the G together, to the R terminal, and that would be your heating mode on a heat pump system. You wouldn't be adding that orange wire in there. 
Now in some systems, the reversing valve does default in a cooling position and you have to power it to put it in a heating position. On those types of systems, you would have the Y1, the G, and the blue wire going to your B terminal to actually activate it in heating mode. And those three would go together to your R terminal to turn the system on. So those are the basics of testing thermostats with multimeters and jumpers. I hope it helped you guys out. Thanks for watching.